We're almost done with our exploration of audio tool. I went ahead in the baseline and I added a little bit more automation. I automated the accent control and put a little bit of an accent on the 15th, 16th note. So you can actually hear that like so. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because if you listen to these patterns over and over again, they start to become so repetitive and very boring that I felt like I probably should go in and change this up a little bit. So we'll be able to hear it in a second. Let's just close this up so we can see everything and we'll take a listen to it here. So really listen at the end what happens, it's going to really pop through. Alright, so like so. Uh, the last couple things we're going to be looking at here with Audio Tool are the synthesizers. I've hooked up another mini mixer here and I just set it into number four. Uh, because we have two synthesizers we have to look at, and so we're not going to have enough inputs or outputs. So let's go ahead and start with their, I guess you'd say it's their sort of like subtractive synthesizer analog emulation. And like I've always said before, don't get too intimidated by the interface. It's all the same controls that we saw in Soundation with the simple and with the Wub machine. So let's just get in here and get started. If you want to be able to play this with your uh, com computer keyboard, you can hit the caps lock key and you can choose your octave based on the numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, just make sure you select the instrument. <laughs> We can hear a sine wave coming through with oscillator one. Let's turn on all three oscillators and maybe we'll even turn on the noise and put that down just really, really low. And what I think we'll do here is set up like three sawtooth waves. All right, what we used before was a square wave uh, with the bass line. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different. They're all playing the same pitch right now. So it's just gonna sound pretty loud. And I'll go ahead and detune those a little bit. And maybe put one of these up an octave. I want to do very subtle panning, not a lot. Probably four is really enough. Uh, we made the bass line pretty wide, and some of our other things are pretty dense stereo. So being able to put this more in mono is going to be fine. It should work well with the track. So. We can go to the filter section here and maybe close this down a little. You'll notice we have things like oscillator sync. Experiment with those on your own. But if I turn this on and then I start to move the tuning here of oscillator two, it's forcing it to stay in, in basically the same pitch range as oscillator one. So I can like get that classic tearing effect. Actually, that sounds pretty good, so we'll just leave it. Add a little resonance. Put a little key tracking in if we want. The spacing seems to be just kind of like a fine tune, like on the frequency control. It might be frequency and resonance moving together. You can mess around with that if you want. But to me, I don't really think it's all that necessary, at least for the sound we're working on here. Uh, I'll go into the amplitude envelope, and why don't we make like a pad sound? So we'll have it fade in over two seconds and then decay down pretty low. And then we'll give it some kind of a release here. This has a really long release, 20 seconds. So be really watching that carefully. We'll put it down to something like, I don't know, six or five. That's pretty cool. 
And then we can also add in a little bit of filter modulation. So we can use both an LFO and the actual envelope. So I'll go in here and set this to filter, put a little bit of depth on here. I'm gonna turn down the rate a lot. get that filter moving a little bit more with the filter envelope we're going to add a very long attack here all the way up probably uh, again fairly long decay it might be the whole way out sustain somewhere in the middle and then a long release to match the release time that we have here or something near it so we'll add some in experiment with this for a pretty long time to try and lock in the settings this is the sort of instrument that definitely has a sweet spot to it you'll see with the other synthesizer we'll look at there's a lot more we can do with that to be honest so i'm going to go ahead pull this out do a little bit of effects processing put in some notes and then we'll come back and see what i was able to get Like I said, this instrument takes a decent amount of tweaking in order to kind of get it to fit with whatever you're working on. So I've used a number of different effects to kind of do that. Some of these are actually like stereo effects to push it wider. So at the end, I actually went into the stereo enhancer effect and tried to pull this thing back down to put it a lot more in mono. And in fact, in mono, it fits better into the track because the baseline we have is very stereo as are pretty much all of the instruments we have except for the drums. So we can go ahead and listen to this and hear what it sounds like. See if I can find the right part, here it is. So there you go. If you are going to use this instrument, definitely spend some time with it. Make sure you uh, experiment a little as well, because it's one of those things where you really just have to find the perfect sweet spot. And when you do, it sounds great. When you don't, it can be a little bit messy. So have some fun with that one.